Let's look into determining the required sample size for one sample proportion problems. Suppose we are about to draw a sample and estimate the population proportion P. We may wish to estimate P to within some amount M with 95% confidence, say. So we might want to estimate P to within 0.01 or 0.03 or some other value depending on the setting with 95% confidence. We can also change that confidence level as well, but more on that in a bit. And the question we're asking here is how large a sample size is required to achieve that goal? Wanting to estimate P with in M is the same as wanting the margin of error of the appropriate confidence interval to be no more than that amount M. This is the margin of error of a 95% confidence interval for P, and we want that to be less than or equal to this amount M. But one snag is we don't yet have a value of P hat to put in this formula because we have not yet taken a sample. And besides, we would rather put the real value of P in there if we could, so let's do that. Ideally, we would put the real value of P in this formula. Now, we don't know the true value of P, otherwise we wouldn't be trying to estimate it in the first place. But let's pretend we do for a moment. Then this would be our margin of error for our confidence interval, and we would want that quantity to be less than or equal to this amount M. Now, all we're going to do is solve for N. We're going to isolate N. And if we did a little bit of algebra there, we would find this, that your N has to be larger than or equal to this quantity here. But here is where that big snag comes in. We don't know P, so what do we do? We don't know the value of P, so we have two main options that we typically use. We can use some estimate of P from previous information. We might have investigated this type of thing before and have a pretty good idea that P lies between 0.1 and 0.2, or that P is really near 0.25, or something along those lines. We may have previous information that would allow us to have some sort of estimate of P to put using the formula. But if you have no reasonable estimate of P, we're going to choose P is equal to 0.5. Why are we choosing that? Well, P times 1 minus P is greatest, is largest, is as large as it can possibly be when P is equal to 0 0.5. And you can show that with a little trial and error or a little calculus. But this quantity in the formula is going to be greatest when P is equal to 0 0.5. This choice of P is a conservative or worst case approach, and it ensures that we have a large enough sample size that we're not actually underestimating the required sample size. And to change the confidence level as per usual, we simply change the Z value. So after all is said and done, we're going to end up with this. If we wish to estimate P within M with one minus alpha times 100% confidence, then we have N is greater than this quantity here. Now let's do a couple of examples. How large a sample size is required if we wish to estimate P within 0 0.03 with 95% confidence? Here's our formula. Now we have all the information we need. We need N being bigger than or equal to the appropriate Z value for 95% confidence is 1.96, as we have discussed many times previously. We want to estimate P within 0.03. That is our M. So M is 0 0.03. That quantity gets squared. I don't have a value for P. Nothing in here tells me anything about this value for P. So I'm going to use my conservative or worst case approach and call P is equal to 0.5. I'm going to say P is equal to 0 0.5 for the purposes of this formula. That's the conservative approach and I get 0.5 times 1 minus 0 0.5. And if you put all that in to your calculator or computer, you'd see that n is bigger than or equal to 1067.1. Now, n has to be a whole number. It is a sample size. And so we round up to 1068. That is the minimum sample size required in order to estimate p within 0.03 with 95% confidence. And you might see in a lot of political polls and this type of thing that they sample around a thousand people and then give you a margin of error of close to plus or minus 3%. Here's another example. How large a sample size is required if we wish to estimate P within 0 0.001 with 90% confidence? 
And let's change it a little this time and say, suppose it is known from previous studies that P is approximately 0.30. In the previous example, we had no estimate of P and we used the conservative approach. But here we have some uh, idea that P is actually close to 0.3 from previous information. All right, we've got our same formula. And we need our N to be bigger than or equal to. And the Z value for 90% confidence, we should know by now, is 1.645. And the M value, we want to estimate P within 0 0.001, so that's 0 0.001. That quantity gets squared, and I'm going to use my estimate of P here of 0 0.03. So I'm going to multiply that by 0 0.30 times 1 minus 0 0.30. And I get that N has to be bigger than or equal to 568,265.2. And I would again round up and say that N has to be bigger than or equal to 568,266. That is the minimum sample size required. Pretty huge sample size and in a lot of cases not very practical at all, which leads us to the idea. These calculations are typically used as a rough approximation. When we get a required sample size of 1,068, that doesn't necessarily mean we have to run out and get a sample size of exactly 1,068. It means that we need something approximately that size, and there may be other considerations taken into effect. And that desired margin of error may not be practical. In the last example, we had a minimum sample size of over 568,000. In a lot of practical cases, that's simply not going to be achievable. We're not going to be able to get a sample size that large in a lot of spots. And so we might realize right off the get-go that what we wanted to accomplish in our study is simply not practical, and we're going to have to make some adjustments.